Now on the channel, I have had a few requests to review some more low powered mini PCs and cheaper mini PCs. I've been reviewing a few now that have had say the Ryzen 7, or they've been using say Cable Lake R or Coffee Lake chips in them, and a lot more expensive, more power consumption too as well. Well this little one here from Aerofara, it's called the Aero 2, got this from Amazon. This one here can sip away at just idle using only about four watts, which is basically nothing for a Windows 10 PC. So this is powered by the Celeron, the J4125. It's a 10 watt processor, four cores, maximum turbo is 2.7 gigahertz. It's paired up with eight gigabytes of dual channel RAM. It has a 256 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD on board it and a very, very small compact size, as you can see. So in this in-depth review, I'll be putting it through its paces. We'll take a look at the thermals, the kind of performance you can expect with more real-world tests that I will be doing. And of course, my pros and cons now after using this for a few days. Inside the box, you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, and our power supply. This is the UK plug, as you can clearly see. Now this one is rated to 24 watts, which is all we need for this low powered system. Looking now at our design and build quality. So we have this alloy housing all around the outside with the plastic that's on the front and back here. So on the left side, we have a little vent right here, VGA. So if you were gonna be running, say, a cathode ray tube with some emulators, then you could do it, of course, having that connection right here. And this is, well, the front, so we just have a status LED right there. And on the right side, our power button, two USB 3 ports, full-size SD card reader. Normally they are micro, so that is good to see a full-size one. And then on the back of it right here, we have all of our ports. So DC in, of course, to power it, another USB 3, HDMI 2.0A, gigabit LAN, and then our audio out and microphone in, combined 3.5 millimeter jack right there and a reset button to there as well. On the top of it, it just simply states Aero Farah, and this is made out of an alloy two on the top. The build quality and the finish is not bad at all. It's actually quite good. And along the bottom here, we just have four rubber feet. And here we have the internals of this fan called mini PC. So a tiny little fan here, very large heat sink, which is not too bad considering this is only a 10 watt system on a chip, this one here, that it's running that J4125. So the hot air is blowing out the side there that I showed you before, where the SD card reader is right there. It's blowing out from there. And nothing's upgradable apart from, well, the SSD. So it's an M.2 SATA 3 SSD. This one's 256 gigabytes. So you could upgrade to, say, 512 if you wanted to go this far and open it up. It is a little tricky. You have to remove, of course, all the rubber feet on the bottom of this and then slide it out and try not to damage the antennas as well, which are right here on this part. Of course, that's why we have the plastic on there to aid the wireless range and reception there. So reasonably good layout. The wireless card is soldered onto the motherboard as well as the RAM, so it's just that SSD. That's the only thing that can be changed on this mini PC. And before I jump into Windows, a quick look at our BIOS here. So we do have eight gigabytes of RAM here and there is the speed it is running at, so 2.1 gigahertz. Now, we don't have any settings, advanced settings at all here. We've only got a few that we can change to do with the boot configuration, boot order, and then a boot override. So what is missing is power limits, advanced settings like that. No, they don't want us touching anything there. And before you get Windows set up, we do have the following pre-installed languages as part of this Windows 10 image. So this mini PC is running Windows 10 Home, it's version 1909, so yes, you will have to run Windows updates to get yourself up to the latest version, all those security patches and everything. So here we have 8 gigabytes of RAM, as I pointed out before, uh, but what we have usable is 7.82 gigabytes, so a little bit is dedicated to the UHD 600 Intel graphics that this does have. Now I have confirmed with HW Info that it is running the RAM in dual channel, so we are not missing out on any bandwidth if it was single channel, which some of the mini PCs have been. So this particular chip here has a 10 watt power limit, which is four more watts than the six watt limited, the N4000 series that I used to review, and I stopped reviewing them a while back because, well, this is too many of them anyway, and it's kind of boring. But this particular chipset, a little bit faster as well because it does have the base clock of two gigahertz and a maximum 2.7 
for the turbo. They had a single thread on all four of the cores, so it's four cores, four threads. It can hold a 2.6 continually because it is fan cooled. The thermals tend to be all right, and I'll get onto the thermals later on in this in-depth review as well. So the internal storage, that SATA 3 256 gigabyte SSD, gives us 200 gigabytes free space that we have on first boot. And these are the speeds of it here. They are not too bad for SATA 3. They're okay. Okay, the writes could be maybe a little bit faster, but we have reached what is basically the read cap here for a SATA 3 drive. So not too bad there. And then under the device manager here, just a couple of things to also point out. So there you can see the CPU listed four times, of course, because it's a quad core, four threads. Network adapter, this one is the dual band wireless AC 3165 from Intel. Very, very common. It's not actually too bad. It does have Bluetooth 4.2, I think it is off the top of my head, so not Bluetooth 5. Uh, maximum throughput is around 400 megabits per second connected up to my current router here. And you'll notice that the range here has been good. So it's full strength for me where I am and no issues with the reception there. It has been performing quite well, not a problem there. And when you look at the disk drive, well, it is their own branded one that they are using which is the Aero Farah, and of course M.2 as I showed you before when we looked at the internals. Now the LAN port on there, you can see that that is listed. That is very common again, Realtex gigabit LAN. So if you wanted faster and better latency and ping rates and things like that, then of course use that. Maybe you might be using it as a file server, media server or something like that. Uh, then you're able to do so with that one there as well. And to take a look at our general performance now. So these mini PCs, this low spec is all about power savings because they're just low wattage, of course, and just general computing. That's all you would really want to do on these. And that's all they have the power ready to do. And I'll give you an idea of what you can expect. So video playback here. This is a demanding file. This is the Jellyfish, 140 megabits per second, 4K ATVC 10 bit. And I'm going to open this one here with the Media Player Classic. And I've got other things running in the background. So this is a multitasking test as well. So you can see that actually plays back really well, no problems. We do have that hardware, VP9 decoding of video and also the HEVC. And that's why it handles all those files really fine. So as a media mini PC for playing those files back, not a problem, very, very good for that. So the start menu normally pops in pretty quick. I do have, as mentioned, some things going on in the background. And general performance around Windows is good. It doesn't bog right down too much. Now, what I will also do is bring up just our performance here and this task manager, right? Okay. And just to show you what is going on right here, I'll just minimize that. And in fact, I needed that always on top, but we can see there that the CPU is pretty stressed out as it is, but it will hold those cores. So 2.6 across all four cores, no problems the whole time. And the thermals have been really good, no matter really what I'm doing. It doesn't seem to go over 78 degrees at the moment. So that is, that is great there. So I've got some documents open. So this is what this is really ideal for these kind of mini PCs, this kind of spec emails, browsing, YouTube, documents, things like that. Even though this is a huge amount of pages, 859, it did take about a minute to load everything in. It did take a while. I'm still able to do these edits in this without it bogging down and getting too laggy. Now it has a little bit of lag. Sorry, I was just pressing on the wrong keyboard there too. So that doesn't help. So it's not perfect. Some lag going on here too. But that's because I've got also other things going on in the background. Just to give you an idea of what you can actually do with this one. Now, spreadsheet is open here too as well. You can scroll through that and loading it up. It's starting to bog down a little bit. And we'll see performance here. It's getting close to the 100 there. I'm using about half of the memory available too as well uh, with this. So Steam is downloading here in the background Counter-Strike. And I just wanted to show you some real world performance on the downloads. That I've actually, I'm actually impressed how this is performing. I have a very poor connection here at home. It's, uh, well, I've got two 4G connections together uh, with my router and setup, and I'm pushing a maximum or peak of 14, almost 15 megabytes per second. It's not too bad. Now I can get a lot more out of this router, but that's just with my internet connection here. So that performance is is not bad. That's going on in the background installing, and this is all again a multitasking test, just to show you stressing it out what it is capable of. Ideally, if you want the best performance, you would be closing things down, of course, and just run one thing at a time. But we can do this little bit of multitasking. And what about benchmarks too as well? So I have run here 
I've got, as you can see, Geekbench 5 that was run, and you can see very low end, okay? So single core scores, not even getting close to 1,000 at all. Here, Geekbench 4 score. So over the 2,000 with this one, uh, 6,000 for multi-core score. Seems about pretty much spot on what I would expect out of the J4125 with this. And it just a couple of other things too as well. I have a one terabyte drive connected up, no problem. It can power it. All the USB 3 ports are working just fine. Now the micro, sorry, not micro, I'm so used to saying micro SD, but the SD card reader, this one is operating and it's only really at a, about USB 2 speeds. Watch as I just transfer this file over to the desktop from it. And I'll show you that it's, uh, yeah, about 26, 24 megabytes per second. It's dropping down a little bit. So it looks to be wired up via a USB 2 hub there. And that's really the maximum speeds you can expect out of the SD card reader. Unfortunately, it's not an ultra high speed one. And now for a Chrome tab test. So I just want to see how many Chrome tabs can I run realistically with the eight gigabytes of RAM? So I'm just going to search uh, search cats before, and this will be dogs this time. Let's make it fair. Okay, so I'm just going to open up a lot of different tabs, and we'll see exactly how the performance is. And remember, I'm still multitasking because I do have Counter Strike installing in the background there. So this is it's not enough. I need more tabs here. Okay, let's just search cats too as well. Why not? Make it fair. No one's feeling left out then. All right, so I think that's about enough with our tabs here. So this swapping over to these different tabs, not too bad. Memory, I still have plenty here, and I don't have 10 tabs open, but everything seems to be loading in fast enough, that is you expect. So decent kind of performance here with the 10 watts is a lot faster than the 6 watt Gemini Lakes from before, and even they could run this and do this test just fine. So you can see swapping between those tabs, Still quick, scrolling, although that's a light page, isn't it? This one's a little bit heavier. Scrolling, things are loading in just fine there. So again, for this kind of light performance, light work, sorry, should I say, these mini PCs are ideal for this, just for your basic computing, documents, spreadsheets, media consumption, and just not triple A titles. So once Counter-Strike's installed, I will then get onto a little bit of gameplay there just to show you what this can do if you wanted to try and game on some older, lighter titles like Counter-Strike. This is on the lowest possible setting, 720p, of course, to try and keep that frame rate up. So we're looking at around 40 frames per second, mid-30s. Not really ideal, but it's doing okay considering the spec. But, wow, a huge bit of lag right then from... The smoke, and I just thought I was going to die there too, but no, you didn't get me, not yet. Yeah, that smoke was a bit of a problem, and is still a bit of a problem there with some lag coming now through from the flames down into the 20s. So let's see if someone's going to come running out. Oh, he was in there. Now the other guy got him. Now I'm just going to go charging in. Oh, dead. I lagged before I even saw him, basically. I had no time to react. That was that was slow, yeah. So not ideal gaming performance, of course, from this low-end hardware, but yes, it can play these older, less demanding titles. So checking back on our thermal, so 83 degrees Celsius maximum for gaming. Power consumption at the wall with my meter right now. All I've got is an SD card plugged in and my wireless receiver for the mouse and keyboard. 3.9 watts only at idle. Very, very good. And general kind of Windows use, about 8 watts, 7 watts. Gaming, 14.5 watts. So this is very, very low on the power consumption. Now touching it, it is barely warm. So very good. And that's probably because of the heat sink in it is quite large, as I showed you. And the fan is constantly on. So yes, it does make a little bit of light fan noise. It's continuous. It's always on. So if you want 100% fan-free no noise system, and sadly this does always have it there, and it's it's not really that bad at all. It's a very light fan noise, but yes, it's there, and it is continual. And lastly, a test here of Linux Mint. So yes, this can run Linux Mint, no problems. Wireless, Bluetooth, audio, everything is working, which is great. No problems whatsoever. 
And it runs, actually runs better than Windows. Yep, it's a lot smoother and seems a little faster too. So now on my time using this mini PC, I think it is actually very good if you're in the market for a mini PC that does have reasonable performance for light computing. And let me stress that, okay, this is just for light computing, this particular chipset. I wouldn't really bother trying to edit 4K video with this. You can super light tiny edits, okay? I wouldn't really go to grading or anything like that because it's become becomes then painfully slow. And it's not designed for that, this chipset either, okay? The Sauron J4125 is light computing. So media consumption, very good for that. Playing back your video files too is great because it's got the VP9 hardware, native video decoding support, HEVC as well, high bitrate files, 4K, handled with ease. Even 4K 60 frames per second files, not a problem for this one as well too, which is really good to see. And then your spreadsheets, documents, internet browsing, with Chrome and Internet Explorer and Edge and all that, very fast, it's fluid, it's not bad for that at all. But if you do stress it out with a lot of multitasking, it doesn't take too much to tax, of course, the tiny little four cores that this particular model has. So the thermals, they have checked out, very good. It only gets up to about 83 degrees Celsius when pushed very hard gaming. And that then brings me to really the only con factoring in the form factor, the chips that it has, is the fan noise. It is not really loud, it's just a continual fan noise, however. Very minor, but it's there, and it's not passive. So if you don't like your fan noise, this does have a little bit of continual fan noise all the time, and that's just the, really the only thing. Another couple of I wish it had things too as well with this, that instead of the VGA port, I would have preferred another HDMI so I could run two monitors, another HDMI 2.0 would have been okay, that would have been good. And then a mounting bracket support would have been good for this. Visa mount bracket, so I could put this onto the back of say a monitor or a TV that other models do have. But I really do love the size of this thing. It is so slim and tiny, really, really good there. And overall for the spec of mini PC, for as mentioned, the light computing, it does a decent job here. So that is the Aero Farah Aero 2 review from me. And thank you so much for watching. I do hope to see you back in the next up and coming reviews.